Hi everybody, my name is Angie. Welcome to my channel. Uh, so today I'm going to go over how I store my fabric and just um, kind of show you guys how I uh, fold and store different uh, pieces of fabric and different types of fabric that I have, uh, bigger and smaller pieces. Um, so we'll just go ahead and get into it. So one thing that I like to use is comic book boards. So these are supposed to be used for um, putting a comic book or putting in a comic book sleeve to like keep it upright so that it doesn't bend. But it, it's just a little piece of cardboard. So you could just use cardboard too. But um, I get these on Amazon. I'll go ahead and link it below. It's like a hundred pack of them um, that I get on Amazon. And it's the perfect size for what I like to use them for. Uh, so I just like to take my fabric and wrap it around and then stack these up on a shelf and I'll go over that in a little bit. Um, but that's how I like to do um, smaller cuts of yardage. Like I would say up to like two to three yards, anything over that and it starts to warp this and it, um, it just doesn't hold up very well, but for anywhere from a half to two to three yards, it works really well with these comic book boards. Um, and a lot of the times I usually buy in, when I buy yardage, um, unless I have a certain project in mind, I usually like to buy a yard of it. So it works out well. So here is a piece that I have. I don't remember how big this is. I bought this a while ago. So Looks like it's, I think this was a remnant, it's just shy of a yard. But so, what I like to do is take it and it is folded um, with the salvage ends um, folded together on the side here. So, we have the, the length of it, the yardage going this way by the width of fabric folded in half. And then I just take it and fold it into thirds. And I'll set my little comic book board, I'll set that to the side of it if I need to. Um, once I've done this enough, I can kind of eyeball it and know that I'm folding it to the right size. Uh, but I just set it beside so that I know the length that I want to fold it to. And that looks about right. And I just go all the way across. I'll do a little bit more. So it's about the right size. I like to have just a little bit overhanging um, on either end. You can do it. I've seen other people fold it so that the uh, fabric comes right up to the tips, but that's just how I like to do it with it overhanging a little bit. And then we just fold it over and then keep it, I kind of pull it back so that it's nice and snug and then just keep folding and you could leave it like that with the edge hanging out. I'm particular about that and I don't like that little bit hanging off so I'm gonna make it a smaller piece that it's folding over here so that I have a bigger piece on the end and that way it's not flopping over it just kind of lays nice and flat and then we got another piece I do that every time. Okay, so once I have them all wrapped up like that and it's all nice and even, I like to go ahead and um, I have a bookshelf that I store all of my fabric or the majority of my fabric on um, that I use these comic book comic book boards for. So I'll go ahead and show you how I organize all of that. Okay, so this is the bookshelf that I use. It's um, the Calyx, I don't know how to pronounce it, uh, but it's from Ikea, one of the bookshelves that they have at Ikea. I'm lucky to have an Ikea near to my home, so I was able to go and just run and grab it. 
Um, but so this is what I use for uh, storing my fabric and or the bulk of my fabric. And these um, comic book boards fit very nicely inside here. It gives me some nice organization. I can very clearly see um, everything that I have. I have it organized by uh, quilting cottons. Uh, that shelf there is just my bull cozy stash that I'm going to be making bull cozies with throughout the year. Um, and then I have my canvas and home decor weight fabric, uh, some yardage, more yardage that I got at Amish country. Um, and there's a lot of fabric and I bought it and now I have no idea what to do with. So that's awesome and how I like to do things. Um, flannel, waterproof canvas. I like to use the waterproof canvas for linings of purses. I think it gives it a nice touch and um, I use it if you watch my video of the um, car trash cans I used it in the the lining of the car trash cans and then I have denim down here in this cube um, along with um, like linen and other types of uh, heavier weight fabrics that I like to use for the base of bags and then down here is minky for the most part. Uh, so minky that I have set aside to make for blankets. And then this cube down here is my minky remnants that I have sorted out that I have to figure out what to do with. So when I have these comic book boards and the fabric is all wrapped on there, um, I just like to kind of running out of space so I need to actually use up some of this fabric but we just kind of shove it in here I'm very running out of space there we go. okay but then as you can see it is all there I can see the edge of all of the prints of fabric so I have a very clear picture of all of the prints that I have um, so I have a better idea of what I have. Eventually I'm going to go through and sort out by color so that I can very easily see if there's any colors that I'm missing or would like to get. Um, but yeah, so that is how I store all of my fabric on here using the comic book boards. And then I'll scooch on over. I have another smaller bookshelf that I use for uh, some of my bigger cuts and uh, pre-cut fabrics and stuff like that. So I'll show you that next. Okay, so it's kind of hard to get this um, at a good angle so that you can see everything, but you can see it's right next to my bookshelf that I have all of my comic book board fabric on. And then right next to that, I have this other bookshelf where I have all of my thread up on top here. Um, again, it's kind of hard to see, but I have my little thread stands, which eventually I plan to anchor those onto the wall um, to free up a little of the shelf space, space up on top. Um, but this shelf is a work in progress year. I don't know if I want to keep things the way that it is, but this is how I do things now. So up here is my interfacing. Um, so all the interfacing that I use or the majority of the interfacing that I use, um, is all up on here. So there's a lot of feasible fleece, SF 101. Um, what else do I got in there? That's the majority of it. I have some 809, 808, and some P44F. It's all the different types of Pellon interfacing that I use for uh, sewing bags. So that's the majority of it. And then this shelf is all of my pre-cuts. So we have um, fat quarters mainly in these little so these ones I just got at Target a few years ago. Um, they're just little containers, but they fit the fat quarters pretty nicely in there. So that's what I use. They do kind of hang over the edge here, but it fits pretty good in here. Uh, so both of those are fat quarters. And then these other two here are other pre-cuts like um, um, charm packs and fat quarter bundles and some jelly roll strips, stuff like that. And then the next two shelves are some of the heavier weight uh, fabrics that I use. 
like these ones here are um, the pre-quilted fabric. I like to use these for bags. These are nice. They are double faced, so they are, they have fabric on the other side of it too. Uh, so you can, if you have a zigzag stitch on your machine or a serger, I just got a serger and I'm really excited to try it out. Uh, but if you have a serger, you can just serge the edges of it and all of a sudden it is good to go to make uh, placemats out of or a bag um, with the edges serge. And it, it won't have any pockets or anything on the inside, but it will be lined since it is that double sided. So I like using these for that as well. And then the rest of it is minky fabric again. So I have a big stash of minky fabric that I need to do something with. Uh, so that is that bookshelf. And that is what that corner usually looks like. This tub here is just filled with other interfacing that I use. Uh, so my bigger bolts of SF101, uh, Decoville, there is batting on the big roll, um, a big package of batting, uh, that I'm going to use for bowl cozies as well as some um, foam stabilizer for bags. So that's what that big tub is. It was getting a little out of control mixed in with the rest of the interfacing so I just threw it all in the tote and it works. Okay and then moving on next to my sewing table I have these totes um, that are these containers that are also full. Um, so this one is just my patterns and my um, empty comic book boards that I haven't used yet. Um, and this is other sewing supplies, uh, rulers and other like embroidery thread and stuff like that. Um, and then this is all of my zippers and bag hardware. And then we've got just some other bag making material if I wanted to make piping or a drawstring bag. Um, the, stuff for that and then webbing and just some other stuff um, key fob bias tape elastic and um, what's this called not velcro hook and loop and some ribbon and a random fleece blanket that I have been working on for like four years that I keep forgetting about. And I keep a stash also of fabric, um, all different types of fabric. So I've got um, a roll of marine vinyl, um, all from Joann's. I have some, uh, what is this, lightweight uh, home decor or lightweight upholstery, some outdoor upholstery fabric, and then a bunch of cottons, uh, like quilt weight cotton. And I use these. Um, these are all remnants that I got super cheap at Joann's. And I like to keep those on hand for if I'm trying out a new pattern and I don't want to use my pretty fabrics or if I am creating a new pattern myself. Sometimes it takes some playing around with dimensions and things and I don't again I don't want to use my pretty fabric for that so um, I just buy whatever type of fabric I'm looking for I look for it on clearance or in the remnants at Joann's and that's what I go with because it's cheap and I don't care if I screw it up and then down here is a bunch of uh, work in progresses that I have yet to finish or I don't even know what I'm gonna do with yet uh, mainly quilting related. Um, I have a Christmas quilt in there, some, this is a, a table runner that I have the top done, but I need to get a backing for it. And some, what, what even was that? Oh, some Thanksgiving themed uh, placemats that I started on like three years ago and then forgot about. Maybe I should work on this drawer. Oh, and I also, I need to put these away, but these are, uh, shout out to Mormino, the Peekaboo Beauty Bag, makeup bag. This is super cute. Look at this pretty fabric. I have a tutorial showing how to make this, so I'll link that below. If you haven't checked it out yet, go take a look. Because it's a super cute bag. And actually, 
I sized down the pattern. So this is cute little one. It's so cute. So definitely go check that out. Like I said, I'll link it below. Okay, so then the last little bit, sorry, I'm, I couldn't get a good angle with my tripod, so I'm just holding it. So sorry if it's shaky, but this is just where I keep the majority of my vinyls um, and faux leathers that I use for bag making. Um, so I just kind of keep them in a roll and keep them all stashed in here. And then this drawer is my, or this little bin is my smaller pieces as well as um, like little scraps uh, that I want to save. Don't feel like pitching. And then we'll ignore that. And, that. and then up here, sorry if the lighting's bad, I'm right underneath the light. Um, but I get these little shoe boxes. Um, they're supposed to be shoe boxes, at least. Um, so they are just the little, like, Sale Right, I think is the brand, um, containers that I get at the dollar store for a dollar. Um, and I use that for the bulk of my scraps. Um, so I have them sorted out to my interfacing scraps, batting, what is that, canvas, waterproof canvas, flannel, cotton, uh, quilt cotton, like larger pieces of quilt cotton, and then lots of other pieces of quilt cotton. And I have another bin somewhere that I am working on cutting up some of my scraps into two inch or two and a half inch strips. Um, I feel like that may end up being more usable and I can easily turn that into a quilt compared to random size pieces. So that is another project that I'm working on. All right, so there you have it. So that is how I store all of my fabric. Well, and I guess all of the other sewing supplies that I have for the most part. I kind of went into a little bit more detail, but that is how I store all of my uh, fabric and sewing supplies. Uh, so let me know in the comments down below what you do, um, if there's any tips or tricks that you have for small sewing spaces. Um, I do feel very uh, grateful and very lucky that I do have a sewing room that I can use. I do have my own full sewing room. It is a very small room though, uh, so I do have to be uh, kind of creative and very specific about the space that I am using. Um, like even this little space right here, I want to go ahead and get another bookshelf there, um, just since there's not much stuff that I can put in that space as is, but if I have a bookshelf then I can utilize the height of the space as well. Um, so just different little things like that. Um, if you have any other tips or tricks that you like to use in your sewing room or in your sewing space, uh, let me know in the comments down below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you'd like it and um, make sure to subscribe so you can uh, get notified when I post any new videos uh, to keep up with uh, what I'm making next. All right, well, thanks for watching, bye.